He didn't teach me very, he taught me very little Gemara. He himself didn't know what it meant. He taught me to, to, to experience God and to write a good Hebrew. People ask me, where did I get my Hebrew from? If I'm that old Malamed, I'm a very strange person. He was a, he had a, a sense for literature and for styles. Funny, funny person, anyway. So before Rosh Hashanah, he used to talk to us about Malchus and He was using terms from Chabad, from Kabbalah. I didn't understand the terms. Now they begin to make sense to me. But however, what he told me is actually the spring well of my religious emotions. My religious emotions and my religious experiences stem from his words, which, while they were addressed to me and to my classmates, I mean, were incomprehensible, completely irrational to us. But still, somehow, they, the words sank in into my personality, into the inner recesses of my personality, and now it's like a geyser which breaks through my personality, and, 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 and somehow, and, and the, his ideas, I mean, find expression in modern idioms, of course, I mean. So before Rosh Hashanah, I, I believe, we used to assemble us Erev Rosh Hashanah in the morning, just a couple of hours. We never studied much under him, but it was just a dialogue between him and yeah. well, So I enjoyed it very much, and then Father realized that he, he hasn't taught me anything, so so he took me out of his head. So before Rosh Hashanah, I used to see children, do you know what we are going to do tonight? Tonight, Rosh Hashanah? Yes. I used to tell him, he used to ask, he was an excellent pedagogue. I used to tell him, he, he child, he child. Some children stayed, they brought, the parents brought them a new suit, new suits for Rosh Hashanah, they put on their new suits, I mean children. Oh, no, no, no. Rosh Hashanah, this is the night of coronation tonight. The night of coronation. We are now crowning the king, the king. Can you guess who this king is? So children, I actually was saying Nikolai, Nikolai was that time still king. <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas the first, I mean, the, the, the Tsar of Russia. <laughs> the Imperator of Russia. Nikolai. Nikolai. Uh, no children. Nikolai is not a king. Today is here, tomorrow will be in grave. In his grave. I mean, Nikolai is not a king. There is only one king. Who is the king? This is the Almighty. And you know, I mean, the Almighty wants us, us, poor Jews, oppressed Jews, don't forget, we live in the ghetto, oppressed Jews, despised Jews, we, we hardly earn a living. Jews have no right, I mean, to, 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 to travel in Russia or, or, or to live in Russia, you know, that to give him the crown. He wants us to proclaim him as king. And he used to tell us that he was raised in Lubavitch, still the Tzemach Tzedek was the one I mean, remembered, that Tzemach Tzedek used to call Rosh Hashanah night the Koronatia Nacht, the night of coronation. And if you want to know what Rosh Hashanah is, all the philosophies are later, are later studied, studied Hermann Kohn and Franz Rosenzweig about Rosh Hashanah and Malchus, all their philosophies are expressed in that short sentence. You know what Rosh Hashanah is? It's the holiday, the festival of coronation. And the night of Rosh Hashanah is the night of coronation. Who is crowned? The Almighty. Who gives him the crown? Who anoints him? Who elects him? Poor, weak, and helpless man. Why such a paradox? This is Yadus. Yadus wanted men to crown God. 